In this video, we're going to look at how to add records manually to your EndNote library. The majority of the records in your library will end up being added automatically from the library search feature or from journal databases. However, many sources can't be added automatically. For example, web pages or chapters in edited books or conference papers, basically anything that isn't a basic book or journal article. So you need to know how to do this manually. So in this video, I'm just going to manually enter a record for each of these three sources. But the principles within this will work for any reference. Now with any reference management system, you do need to know how to reference something manually before you know what information to include when you're adding a reference. If you're at all unsure what you might need if you're referencing something fairly obscure, check the Referencing Your Work Skills Guide because there's help with referencing all sorts of different resources in the referencing guidelines. I'll start by adding a reference to a website. To create a record manually for a reference, you need to go to the New Reference button. You can also use the References menu and choose the top option, which as you can see here is also Control N on your keyboard. That will open an empty record. The default reference type is a journal article, so the first thing you need to do is change that. And I'm going to select, in this case, a web page. You can see that when I've selected that, the fields that I have to fill in have changed, but you still don't need to fill them all in. The web page that I'm going to be referencing is this one. It's a slideshow with numerous examples of digital photo tampering throughout history. There is no obvious author for the site, so I'm going to use Scientific American as the author, as this is their website. There's also no obvious date at this top part of it, but if I scroll down to the bottom, there is a copyright date, so I'm going to use that. I'll switch back to EndNote. So my author is Scientific American. I've already used that before, so mine was in the memory. Notice that I put a comma at the end of the word American. This is important for any corporate authors of more than one word because if I didn't put the comma there it would get confused and think it was the name of someone and probably just put American comma S as the author. The year was 2020. If I didn't know the year I would just put ND. For the title I'm going to switch back to the website and just select that. Copy it, go back to my new reference window and paste that in. Now both of the whole styles, Harvard Hull and Footnotes Hull, use sentence case for their titles. So I'm just going to change that for those words. The access date is today and I have recorded this on the 28th of April. If I was using footnotes then I might add a short title, perhaps just digital forensics put it in, it doesn't matter if I don't need it. Notes is for any notes you yourself have or any research notes, anything about how you're going to use that in your research. You can fill those in if you wish. The only other thing you absolutely need for the reference though is the URL. And again, I'll just pop back to the website for that copy it from the bar at the top and paste that in. I can then save that and close that window 
switch back to EndNote and you can see that is now in that central window. Over on the right hand side I can see the summary. If I bring up my preview I can see that there and obviously I could see how that looked in Harvard Hall. If I wanted to make any changes just can't quite see the edit button at the moment. If I just make this slightly wider you can see I can click on edit and I could edit that um, in that window there. Now I'm going to add a reference for a chapter in an edited book. For this example, I'm actually going to do a chapter in an ebook. We're all using a lot more of these at the moment. The ebook I'm going to be looking at is this one here, which is on Sage Research Methods. Most of the information I need to complete this is at the top of this page. I've got the chapter title, the book title, the author of the chapter, the editors, and the year it was published. As well as that, if I click on the site button over here, it shows me the information about the publisher and the page range. Notice there is an option to export this to EndNote. However, I've tried this several times from Sage Research Methods and it never seems to get it right, so it's best to do this manually. So I'm going to switch to EndNote and create a new reference. So the first thing I need to do is change it to be the appropriate reference type. So I'm looking for the electronic book section. Note, if you have the paper copy, there is the book section here. And I can then start putting the information in. The author's name was John Wagner, but I'm not typing that in exactly as it was. I'm going to put in the surname first, then a comma, and then the name. It doesn't matter if your referencing system only uses initials, EndNote will take care of that. The year was 2011. For the title, I'm going to go and copy that from the ebook. And again, I can see that needs changing to be in sentence case. The editors need entering in exactly the same way as I did the author, so surname first. So I need Margolis Eric and Powell's Lou. Sometimes though, if the spellings are awkward, it can be easier to just copy them and change it once you're in EndNote. So I'm going to switch to put the surname first. I don't need the and. EndNote will add that for me. If you've got two authors or two editors, they just go on their line by themselves. And I'll switch that around as well. So I've got Margolis, just think about an extra space there, yeah. Margolis Eric and Powell's Luke. The book title, I'll again just copy. This should also be in sentence case, but SAGE is always written in full capitals, so I'll leave that. For the place published, I'm going to look over in the site information. So it's London and SAGE Publications. London. Notice I didn't add the extra colon again. EndNote will do that for me in my document. Now the only other thing I need is the page range of the chapter. And again that was given over in the citation information. So it's 72 to 96. Now the whole styles don't need the DOI number. 
but it does no harm to add it if you've got it in case you ever want to use this with a different referencing system. So I'm just going to pop that in. It won't appear in the reference in my document when I'm using the whole styles. So that's everything completed. I can just click save and close. And again, I can see that in Harvard Hull style. I can switch it to Footnotes Hull. I can even switch it to APA if I wanted to see that DOI added. And finally, we'll look at adding a reference for a conference paper. Adding a conference paper can be tricky as they don't always give you the information that you need for the reference. I've got an example of one here. So this is a PDF. I can see at the top the name of the conference and that gives me the year and I've got information about the conference presentation and the two authors. What it doesn't give me anywhere is where or when the conference was, which I need for the reference. So I need to do a little bit of research to find out where this was. So I'm going to select the title of the conference and copy it and switch to Google. Paste that in. If I click on the top link here, it tells me that it took place in Limerick from July the 10th to July the 13th that year. So I've now got all of the information I need to complete the reference. Again, if you're not sure what information you do need, check out the appropriate referencing style guidelines on the Reference in Your Work Skills Guide. So back in EndNote, I'm ready to create my new reference and switch to the conference paper option. Notice there is also conference proceedings. These are for if you're referring to the conference as a whole and the publication that came out from that as a whole. An individual paper, you would use the conference paper. So I'm going to copy the author names from the paper because they were quite difficult to spell. I think I'll manage the Vim bit, so I'll just do the surname. Switch back and copy the other one. Paste that in and add the first name. The year I remember was 2005. The title I'll get from the paper. Now I can see here that it's included the line break when I've pasted that in. So I'm just going to go to the beginning of the second line and use the backspace to make sure that's all on one line. Again, it needs to be in sentence case, so I'll just sort that out. I don't need an editor, but I do need the conference name. Actually, I didn't need proceedings. The conference location was Limerick and the date of the conference was the 10th to the 13th of July. Now, if I did have the place published, I could put that in as with the publisher but there was nothing on this document and it's not essential. It's quite rare to have them for individual papers. I need the, to give the uh, page range. So I just check that back on the document. So the first page is 288. The last page is 299. So 288 to 299. And that is everything that I need for this. So I can save and close the reference and we can see it there in the library. So the general rule is to check what information is needed in a particular reference type 
and then fill in as much information as you have got. You may need to do a little bit of research to find out the odd piece of information, but usually as much information as you have is sufficient, as long as it's enough for a reader to be able to locate the resource.